The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Evan and I'm a technical engineer for Active Reports. I'm also here with my colleagues, Troy and the team. Can you guys introduce yourselves to the audience? Hey guys, my name is Mateen. I'm the product manager for Active Reports. Hi everyone, I'm Troy Taylor and I work with the Active Reports team as well on Active Reports JS. All right, cool, thanks guys. So today's webinar will be about the data visualization and interactive tools that are used in active reports. So let's take a look at today's agenda. First, we want to ask you all to answer a quick poll. Um, that way, Mateen, Troy, and I can see what experience you all have with active reports. We will then give an update with active reports and what's to come. After that, we'll explore and demo some data visualization and interactive tools. And finally, we'll take some time at the end to answer some questions you might have. Also, feel free to ask questions uh, throughout the webinar. We'll be monitoring them um, all throughout the webinar. So now, let's have you all answer this poll. So give us one moment as we uh, set it up. Give you some time to quickly answer it. Um, just want to kind of gauge your experience with active reports. All right, so once um, we get a few more answers, I'll close this down in a few seconds. Let's close this down and view the results. All right, so from looking at the results, it looks like we have um, a lot of users that haven't used active reports at all. Um, we have some experienced users that have used it in the past um, for more than three years, like the prior versions. Um, we have some, about 30% uh, are within that one year range and also to that one to two year range that also have that experience uh, that are new to, to this experience of active reports. So thank you all for filling that out. Um, that helps us greatly um, for future webinars and, uh, and for making our reporting solution better. Um, now we can discuss uh, what's new with Active Reports. So this month, we just released Active Reports 13.2. This is our second service pack for version 13, and this release contains several new features and enhancements, such as the improved CSV data provider. We've improved the CSV data provider by giving users the ability to load CSV data from a URL in a page and REL report. This makes using dynamic CSV data or data stored in a central location must much easier. We have also improved the CSV rendering extension so that you can export to CSV without the file containing headers. Users now have the option of setting the no header Boolean property through the UI or through code. Next, we've, in, we've implemented several small enhancements around high resolution SVG Im images to deliver a big difference. These enhancements include improved memory consumption when rendering reports with high res images and reducing PDF output size by almost 50%. Lastly, we've made improvements to the JS viewer. So when running a project, the JS viewer creates certain temporary folders for report rendering. Once the application page is closed, the temporary files are deleted. So we, end, so we ended up adding this feature to the JS viewer to help with the, with the efficient layout. 
is getting page info for the page in which the JS viewer is hosted. Other than Active Reports 13.2 being released, we have also just re released a brand new uh, JavaScript reporting solution, Active Reports JS. I'm going to pass it off to my colleague Troy so that he can tell us more about it. Uh, thanks, Evan. So, uh, Active Reports is the uh, latest addition to the Active Reports product family. Uh, as the name indicates, it is a JavaScript implementation of Active Reports that's designed for web development. So, reports can be generated and um, rendered on the client. And we realized that there was a growing need for uh, lightweight reporting scenarios that can be handled within the browser. So that's why we created Active Reports JS to address those uh, needs and requirements. Um, so it also includes a designer that can be installed on uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux machines. So it's cross-platform. This enables your report designers to design their reports on any platform. Uh, you can download Active Reports uh, from our website today. There's a 30-day trial, uh, which includes unlimited support from our product team. You know, we would love to hear uh, more about your reporting requirements and answer any questions that you may have regarding Active Reports. And if you're interested in learning more about Active Reports JS, we do have a webinar tomorrow. Uh, so please join us. We'll uh, take a deep dive into some reporting challenges that Active Reports JS addresses. Uh, you can sign up on our website and we'll host a morning and afternoon session so you can choose a time that works best for you. I uh, hope you all can join then and Evan, I'll hand it back over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Troy. Uh, like Troy just mentioned, we have uh, a webinar tomorrow to go over this cool new reporting solution, so I hope you all um, can join us. Next, we are going to discuss what we have planned for the next major version of After Reports which is scheduled to be released later this year. I'm going to pass it off to my other colleague, Mateen, so that he can tell us what to expect for this new version. Thanks, Evan. Uh, yes, uh, so Active Reports 14, as Evan mentioned, is going to be released at the end of the year. Um, so quite a few major features that we'll be incorporating into AR14. Um, to start off uh, the list, we'll just mention a couple here. Uh, but to start off, um, we'll be including .NET Core support. So that includes .NET Core for ASP.NET and um, the uh, desktop pack, so .NET Core 3. Um, both of those will be supported in Active Reports 14. Uh, so uh, this is something that has been um, uh, on our roadmap for some time. And we're excited to have, uh, to have this uh, releasing uh, later on this year. Um, the second major feature that we have in core included in AR14 is an enhanced PDF export. So this basically um, improves what the existing PDF export does um, from a speed, um, uh, performance, uh, memory usage, uh, and just overall, um, uh, uh, overall export functionality, um, a cleaner, crisper PDF export. Um, so we're excited about this particular uh, feature as well. And in addition to that, it will also include the ability to, to add metadata to your PDFs. It will also include the ability to, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, create um, um, uh, acroforms, uh, so fillable PDFs essentially. Um, then the next uh, feature that I wanted to mention is the um, uh, data source and data set uh, enhancements in the web designer. Um, if you are not aware yet, uh, Active Reports 13, which released earlier this year, included the web designer. Um, so now you can design reports in the uh, Active Reports web designer in addition to our other designers. Um, this web designer currently does not have the ability for the end user to create data sets and data sources. Um, however, in the coming release of AR14, uh, we will be adding that functionality in the web designer. So the back end validation of the queries um, and, and, and such will be included in AR14. <clears throat> and finally, um, if, uh, as you might be uh, aware already of our um, Win, uh, WinForms or desktop version of our end user designer, uh, this is the end user designer that you can pass off to your end users, to your customers. Uh, that they can modify existing reports or they can create brand new reports um, and, and these types of things. So this is something that they can install on their machine and uh, go to town on, on, on reports. Um, 
And so this is a uh, free thing that you can pass on to your end users. There's no uh, you know, fees or anything associated with this. Um, so we are revamping and uh, uh, giving this a uh, end user designer a facelift. So we are just going, um, redoing the whole thing. Um, so this will be an updated end user designer, more modern, more functionality, uh, and much faster to work with, much easier to work with. So with that, I'll hand it back over to um, Evan. Awesome. Thanks, Fatin. Uh, real quick, you mentioned that AR14 will support .NET Core. Will this version still support um, the old uh, .NET frameworks? Yes, it will support both uh, .NET Core uh, and .NET uh, full framework. Cool. Thanks, Fatin. Sure. Um, now we are going to dive into some of the data visualization tools. So um, just give us a few moments here while we get this all set up. All right, guys, uh, thanks for waiting. So for those of you that aren't familiar with this designer, this is the new Actual Reports web designer that the team just, messed, just mentioned. Um, we just released this in version 13, and it's very similar to the end user designer and the built-in visual studio designer we have. If you'll see on the left-hand side here, um, you'll notice that we'll have a toolbox along with uh, the Report Explorer itself. If you look on the right-hand side, you'll see the Properties tab along with the Data tab. Um, these tabs manage the report data sets, data sources, parameters, and the properties of the tools being used in the report. Um, so, and then lastly, we have this ribbon up top that contains the file uh, where it allows you to create a new report, open, save a report, and um, we'll have the Home ribbon which will bring you back to the home page itself, and then the report ribbon, which will allow you to add pages, switch themes with the report. So with that being said, let's get started with, um, with, the, with talking about some of the data visualization tools. So the first tool we're gonna talk about is the table tool. And the table tool is, um, consists of columns and rows that organize data. The table, um, when you add it to a report, has three columns and three rows by default. So a total of nine cells, each of which is filled with a text box. Um, this control is only available in page and RDL reports, and you can embed other controls in, into the cell. So if you notice here, this, let me pull up the report explorer so you guys can see. If you notice here in this table that um, I have a few text boxes within this row right here. And this row right here is the detail row. These text boxes are embedded with, with expressions. And these expressions are connecting this text box to data that I have connected to the report in the data tab. And if you look in the data tab, you'll see that I've connected to an OLDB data source provider, and I've created a data, data set through that data source right here. And then if we expand it down, you'll see all the fields that we're using. And so for this example, I'm going to be using um, um, car data, and we're gonna be showing the model, the brand, kind of the specifications of the car itself, like the horsepower, um, liter engine, the cylinder, and like the category of the car, and some other fields as well. Um, so if we head back to the table here, you'll see that I'm using a couple text boxes to um, pull data from this data source. If we look at the first cell in this row, you'll see that I have an image in this um, in this cell. So I, what I did here is I, instead of using a text box, I embedded an image um, with the table itself. So um, I've worked with a lot of um, Active Reports customers and they've, they weren't, a lot of them weren't aware that you can use, um, you know, different controls besides text boxes in your table control. So um, a good tip when working with the table is you can embed um, different controls like um, images, shapes, containers in your, in, um, in your table itself to kind of add more customization 
to the table and to the report itself. Um, the next thing about this table is you'll see that I'll ha I have these two rows above, and you'll see that um, each row has this one with a bracket next to it. So these, um, so these rows are group headers. And essentially what the group header is doing is it's basically organizing the data in this detail row right here. So what I have this grouped by, so if we take a look at this group, go to the properties tab, um, you'll see that I grouped this data by the brand of the car. So whenever we display the report itself, you'll see that, um, that the report is uh, grouped by each brand of the car. So you'll see um, the first page contains the Mercedes-Benz, along with the model, horsepower, leader, etc. And then if you look at the next page, the BMW, and then the Rolls-Royce, then the Jaguar, and then etc. So th this is how essentially um, you can utilize the table um, and you know some of the customizations of the table um, with Active Reports. Uh, grouping and sorting and filtering are great features with this table itself. Um, the last thing I want to talk about about the table is this uh, region right below the table, which is the fixed page region. Um, and what this region does, it controls the amount of output you want to display on your um, on your report. So we'll take a look at this later on whenever we work with, um, we look at the overflow placeholder, but just be aware of this section. It's a crucial tool for um, controlling the amount of data that you want to display on your report. So the next, exam next tool that we're gonna look at is the container tool. And this tool is kind of um, self-explanatory. This control is basically a container for your report items. So if you take a look at this at this section up top, you'll see that the tool that I selected is the container itself. If we look inside the container, you'll see here that I have a text box and then I have an image. So what the container is doing, it's basically holding all this, all these report items in, um, in your report itself. So if we look at it, through the report explorer, you'll see here that um, we have the container up top, and then you'll see the two controls that are inside the container. So this is a great um, this is a great control because it allows you to organize and see um, what controls you have in your report, as well as it kind of um, allows you to control the flow of data in your report itself. Another way you can use a container is through um, the table control. So like I mentioned before, you know, you can embed um, a picture like I did in my last example to the table. So for this example right here in the cell right next to the picture, I embedded a container within the report itself. And then if you look inside the container, um, you'll see that there are four text boxes, each with individual expressions. So we're going to be pulling the model ID and then the MPG. Um, for the city and NPG for the highway. So that's just miles per gallon. And then you'll notice I created a cell right next to it that also has a container in it and it just has one text box and it's just for the price itself. So if we preview this, you'll now see that instead of having that column-based um, table structure that we saw in the last example, you can now see the specifications of the car um, in this kind of format. So you can see that the model ID and then the miles per gallon are all in this cell right here. And then the price just being on the right hand side. So you'll see that for Mercedes Benz, BMW, um, Rolls Royce, Jaguar, and then so on and so forth. So um, essentially that's how you can um, effective, effectively utilize the container control. Next we're gonna take a look at um, the overflow placeholder control. So as you can see here, um, I have just one small table and it's, it's just going to be displaying the picture. And if you look at the data region, I have it um, pretty um, vertical and pretty thin on this page layout right here. So if you take a look at it, 
you'll notice that uh, all the cars are just being displayed in this vertical um, section based off of the fixed page region we set on the um, on the layout. And you'll see that the cars will keep um, will keep displaying until there's no more. So what we can do here is instead of having all those cars um, being displayed on separate pages, we can place we can use the overflow placeholder to essentially um, put some of those images on this um, on this page instead of being pushed over to the next one. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just setting it up. Then we're going to go over to the properties. We're going to call this OPH1, just something simple we can identify it by. And then next, we're going to go back to the table, and we're going to go to the overflow name property. So what we're going to do here um, is we're going to link this table that I selected to this overflow placeholder. So we're going to go back to the table and then go to the overflow name property, select OPH1, and then, and then the placeholder and the table are now linked. So if we preview the report and check out the example, you'll now see that there's two columns of cars instead of one that we saw earlier. And then you'll see on the next page, it's doing the same thing as well. So what if we want to display all the cars in this, instead of you know, having uh, you know, two columns on separate pages? So what you can do is you can have multiple uh, placeholder controls on your report. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna um, let's copy that same control over and we're gonna just ID them as something else. So I'm gonna call this OPH2 and then I'm gonna call this one OPH3. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna link this table to all these placeholder controls on the report. So if we go back to, we know that the table and the placeholder are linked, so now we gotta link the other ones. So if we go to the first placeholder and we go to overflow name here, we just have to select OPH2. Then next we have to go to the next placeholder and for the overflow name, we have to select OPH3. So now um, the table and all the placeholders are linked together. So if we preview the report, you will now see that all the cars are being displayed all on one page. So this is a good, um, the overflow placeholder control is very useful if you wanna you know, display all of your data on one page instead of it spilling over to the next page. So the last control we're gonna look at in terms of data visualization is the, is the table of contents control. So this report control is used to display the document map, which is an organized hierarchy of the report heading levels and labels along with the page numbers in, in the body of the report. So if you look in the control here, you'll see that we have three levels. So you'll see we'll have level one, level two, and level three. Um, like I mentioned, uh, the report has a document map which contains the levels, the numbering style, and then the source. So the document map has two, um, two sources, it's labels and headings. So if we look at labels first, you'll see on the first page that these are, that these references right here are referring to labels within the report. So if we look at it at design time and we go to the we go to page two and we look at the label property of this text box, you'll see that the label property has it set to table example. That's what we're seeing in the table of contents right here. So this is essentially what this is pointing to in the report. It's pointing to this control, but essentially it's going to display the whole page. So the next, um, other than labels, we also have um, headings. So headings are very useful if you want to kind of have this um, indented breakdown within your table of contents. So if you look at like table two and three, it's nice to have a um, breakdown of just your table of contents here. So if we set the document map to just headings and we preview it, you'll now see that 
we have the brand of the car. And then we also have, which is, so the brand of the car is on level two. And then on level three, you'll see the model of the car right here in the table example. So if we go there, it will directly link you to that section in the table. And then another cool feature that Active Reports has, it allows you to utilize the labels and headings um, of the table of contents. So if we now look at it, you'll see now that um, we'll have the label, which is the table example. And then we also have uh, level two, which contains the brand of the car, which is like Mercedes-Benz, BMW. And then on the third level, you'll see that we have the model of the car itself. So that's, that's essentially how you can utilize um, the, these data visualization tools within our report while using the web designer. So now um, I'm going to uh, hand it off to Matin and he's gonna, well, before we do that, I'm sorry, we're gonna talk about some of the tips, some tips with these controls, with these data visualization controls, and then hand it off to Matin and talk about the interactive tools. So just give us one moment here, guys, while we um, set this up for you. So Evan, while you're setting everything up, uh, there was a question that came through. Um, basically, uh, can the web designer be used in an Angular or a JavaScript application? Um, so, so the web designer cannot be used in um, an Angular application. Um, from my experience, it can be used within um, an ASP.NET application, so like an MVC application or um, a standard ASP.NET um, this web application as well. Um, Mateen, you, do you have any insight as well um, with your experience with the web designer? So the web designer um, itself uh, has a rendering engine, some uh, a, a basically a rendering engine part of it um, built into it. So uh, just the designer itself, it can be used um, in an Angular application. I think we have some samples of this um, as well, but it would require a back end to actually render the reports. The designer in and of itself, um, you know, is useless without the back end um, to actually then. Um, uh, host the uh, report. So the back end would need to be an, uh, uh, an IIS or a, um, uh, an ASP.NET application like you mentioned. Gosh, gotcha. okay, okay, good to know. Okay, um, so thanks, Mateen. So, so now we're gonna head back real quick to the data visualization tips. Um, so now let's take a look at some table tips to be aware of when you're using this control. So when you're using the table, um, when you add it to your report and you know you configure um, data to your report, um, when you start to add fields to the table itself, like that detail row that I was uh, mentioning through my demo, once you add fields to that row, the header section, the row right above it, will auto-populate with that field name. So be aware of that because that's a pretty cool feature. Um, with the table tool itself, it, it's it's nice to have to you know be able to construct a quick and easy table to display data. Um, it's also nice for you know customizing your table and other cool features as well. So another another tip while working with the table is if you select a cell in the table, you can then um, and then you click a control in the toolbox. So say like an image. Um, the that cell will replace that text box with that image control. So kind of what I was talking about earlier about using the um, using images and the containers in the cell. This is um, this is a good tip to know for how to implement different data controls into that table. And then lastly, um, you can merge cells together. So you can essentially. Um, it's it's great for customizing or you know condensing cells and data within your table. 
So next, we'll take a look at uh, the container, some container tips. So um, when you're drawing a container or just adding it to your report, like I mentioned, um, be aware that you need to um, manually put the controls within the container. If you add the container to the report, expecting you know the controls to be placed in there, it won't it won't happen. You will the user will have to make sure that they insert the controls they want into the, into the container. Um, another tip is that you can use the container as a border um, for your report. So if you notice in my report, I had a border up top, kind of just for like the title of the report itself. It had like the car inventory report, and then you could see like the logo on the right hand side. So this is a good feature for customizing your report and also adds um, some visual effects to your report as well. And then lastly, you can use the container um, as, as a background image, almost like a watermark if you want. So if you wanted to drag the container onto your report and then um, expand it to you know, the full size of your report, you have the option of using the background image property of the container to kind of give that watermark effect for your report if you would, if you would like. So then some other tips um, for the overflow placeholder control is you can, like I mentioned, you can use multiple um, place or placeholders um, in your report to create you know, a different look or feel for your report and your data itself. Um, and then, like I mentioned, you can link um, all, all these data regions together by using, um, um, by using uh, controls such as the table or the tablets control to that placeholder control itself. And then lastly, uh, the table of contents. Um, you know, when you're working uh, with the table of contents, you know, I recommend you use labels and headings in your document so you can maximize the, you know, full potential of this control. Um, just be, just remember, labels will always allow you to link um, your table of contents to any control to the report. So like I did with the image, it could be a graph, um, the tablet, chart, you name it. Headings, headings, however, will only allow you to link the text box controls on your report. So like I had in my example, it, the headings like level two and three were being linked to um, the text box control uh, within the table itself. So um, overall, just utilize both um, both sources for the document map, so that's the table of contents, so you can get the maximum potential for the table of contents control. So now I'm going to um, pass it off to Mateen, and he's going to handle um, and talk about the interactive tools. Thanks, Evan. All right, well, I get everything set up. Um, Share my screen here. Um, all right, so Active Reports offers um, uh, quite a few uh, interactive tools, interactive features to be used with uh, with your reporting solution. Um, the first thing, or I'll just mention a, a few of them uh, for the sake of time. But um, for the the first thing that I'll start off with is the drill through feature. Um, essentially, the drill through feature is. Um, where you enable your customers. Um, so let's start off saying uh, you, you, you show your customers a summarized report and then you enable them um, to dig into uh, uh, the, the data, uh, to drill through and see a detailed view uh, of the data. Um, so going off of working off of what um, Evan was creating, the, the report that Evan created, uh, what we're going to do is if we preview this report, um, and go to the very end, go to the very last page where we have all these images. So imagine we want to present this uh, report to a user, uh, and then we want the user to be able to click on any one of these images and go to another report that we have, which is the vehicle data sheet report. So this data sheet report essentially will um, give the price, uh, give the specifications for that vehicle, give a short description, um, you know, something generally similar to what you would find um, if you go to a dealership, you know, paste it on the, uh, paste it on the um, uh, windshields uh, or windows of the uh, vehicles. 
so that's what we're going to do. Um, to get started, and now this report I have set up, if you look at the data tab, and somebody uh, wanted to, John wanted to take a look at the data tab of, of the one uh, of the web designer. Um, so if you look at the data tab, we have a parameter set up, which is the model param. Uh, and we're gonna copy this name because we're gonna need to use it. Um, and we see that it's a hidden parameter. This means that the user, when this report loads, is not prompted for anything, is not prompted to enter a value for this parameter. Um, so it's hidden, meaning that parameter value needs to be passed in somehow. So what we're going to do is uh, let's go back to the design view and we're going to select the image control. Uh, let's go um, to the properties tab and in the properties tab under action, we have the ability to jump to report. Um, and this is the drill through functionality. This is basically what will enable us to um, you know, show a detailed version of uh, a detailed report basically based on a specific uh, action that a user uh, 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 takes is in this case being clicking on the image to uh, show a detailed report um, so uh, with this drill through we are able to actually filter the data and that's what we're going to do with the parameter um, so when we select jump to report here we have the ability to then select what report we want to jump to um, and we're selecting the car data sheet. Um, so let's go ahead and create a parameter in this uh, report and we're gonna name it model param. Let's go to the properties of this parameter and the value we're going to pass is the model. So what that means is that the model from the, uh, that the, the user clicks in that model is passed to the data sheet uh, report and then the data sheet report will display the relevant information about that model. Uh, so that's all that needs to be done with this. Um, so if we go ahead and view, uh, preview this report as it is, uh, again, let's go back to the very last page. Uh, we can click on, let's click on this um, truck. Okay, so you see that the data that comes in is filtered um, and only showing the information for that particular truck, which is actually not highly priced, which is very good. Um, and you can see all of the uh, you know, specifications and the descriptions come in uh, and we can actually go back and pick another vehicle um, as soon as it loads here. Uh, let's, pick, uh, let's pick this car, I guess. Um, and we see we actually don't have any specific data for the charts uh, for this particular vehicle, but we have everything else. Um, so let's go uh, back and talk a little bit about some other functionalities or some other features that we can incorporate um, as far as interactivity goes. Um, so a lot of the times we hear from uh, you know, users of data analytics uh, that they complain that uh, you know, they're not being given or they don't have access to the appropriate level of um, you know, detail in the data. Um, so what that means is that they, they want to access certain data, but they don't have access to it, obviously. Um, now, there's a lot of things you can do. You can, you can throw all of your data in a report and, you know, let them figure out, you know, which data they're interested in. Uh, but obviously, this is going to be overwhelming for the majority of the users of your report. There's a number of ways you can solve this, and one of these uh, is going to be what uh, our next feature that we're going to talk about is, and that is the drill down feature. The drill down feature basically, um, and with drill through, you saw that you we navigated from one report to another. The drill down, on the other hand, stays within the same report. Uh, so what we're going to do is use this uh, um, sheet, the, uh, the data sheet report, uh, to implement a drill down functionality. So again, the idea behind the drill down functionality is, is that you, um, can display a, uh, a summary of the data and allow the user to drill down into you know, specific regions of the data that they're interested in. Um, so that's basically the idea behind it. This means that every user will have access to you know, the level of data that they're interested in. Um, so what, what happens is, is that they see a, a little plus or minus icon and they click and expand and collapse, uh, hide and show uh, specific data regions uh, that they might want. Um, so with this report being selected, as you can see this, uh, we have uh, a, a chart. So let me show you this report again. 
So we have a chart here and that shows the same uh, information as the miles per gallon, you know, the, the text here. So maybe we have a user that says, hey, I, I, you know, I'd rather see the chart instead of these. And another user says, no, uh, I want to see both. Uh, so how do we do this? We can actually manage that with drill downs, right? Um, so let's go and, and, and implement this functionality. So we'll select the chart. Um, and what we're going to do is show, uh, let's go to the properties pane first, uh, go to visibility. And what we're going to do when this report loads, we're going to hide the report. We're going to hide this chart rather. Um, and we're going to assign a toggle control that will allow us to show or hide this chart, uh, you know, based on a click on that uh, um, plus or minus. Um, so that's going to be text box 11, which is up here. Um, now, to satisfy the other users that don't want to see this, we can also assign the same toggle, the same functionality to the same control. So we'll highlight these four text boxes and again, uh, scroll down to visibility and we'll say same text box 11 is going to be the toggle. Now, this time we're not going to hide this because, you know, some users, they only want to see this. Some users want to see both. Um, and so uh, we'll just leave it as it is. And so let's go ahead and save this report. Uh, we don't have to do anything else in that parent report. So all we have to do is just go back and preview um, another, let's pick this um, uh, car, uh, the Acura. And we see that the icon shows up here, the plus icon. So now if I click on it, it will load the chart and hide the two text boxes. So now the miles per gallon is shown as a chart as opposed to being shown as a um, you know, text value. But everything else stays the same. So that is the functionality of a drill down uh, feature. Now, um, obviously, you know, this is very useful in, in cases where you have lots of data to show, but you don't want to overwhelm your users, like I mentioned. Um, you want to show, you know, a summary of a summary type of report, um, like a master detail type. You want to show a summary type report and then allow them to drill down into the details um, of uh, that report. So that is uh, very quickly the um, uh, uh, what do you call it? The uh, drill down functionality. Um, lastly, what I will show is a bookmark. Uh, bookmark, as we all know, is you you essentially mark a uh, control or area of your report, uh, you know, with a bookmark label, and then you link to it. Um, so uh, basically, what we have set up here, and Evans already created this for us. Um, what we have here, this this little text box act, acts as a link. Uh, so bookmarks are essentially like hyperlinks, but within this within the within the report. Um, so what this does, this this uh, text box is, is it takes us back to the table of contents page. Um, so we have this text box up here as the target. Um, so if we search bookmark, we see that we're give, we've given a label to this text box, which is a, a bookmark label, which is a, a car inventory report. Now, when we go to page two, three, or four, and we click on this. Uh, a text box, we see that the action of this text box is set to jump to bookmark with this label, which is again on page one. So if we preview this report and we go anywhere, uh, let's go again to the very last page for simplicity's sake, and we can actually click on this and it takes us back to, you know, uh, our uh, uh, table of contents. So uh, just very uh, quick functionalities that you can incorporate into your reports that make, uh, make it a lot more functional for your users. Um, so we're going to go ahead and switch back to the PowerPoint presentation so that I can uh, review some, uh, some, give you some tool, uh, some tips uh, with regards to uh, these three features. Um, the first thing, uh, bear with us as, I, as we load the PowerPoint presentation. Um, the first thing that we covered uh, was uh, the drill down or drill through rather, the drill through functionality. And if we can share the PowerPoint presentation here. There we go. Okay, so the first thing that we shared was the drill through uh, feature. Uh, the drill through 
uh, feature, as I mentioned, is uh, basically to um, navigate from one report to another. Um, now, because there are two reports here, uh, the um, thing to remember is that they should be in the same directory, especially um, if you're exporting to HTML. Uh, both reports have to be in the same directory. Otherwise, that linking doesn't work. The drill through will not work. Um, now, with regards to designing the report or viewing the report, uh, you know, in, in the viewer, they don't necessarily have to be in the same directory. That can be managed. But when you're exporting, especially to HTML, they need to stay in the same directory. Um, other exports do not support this. So PDF, for example, PDF format uh, does not support drill throughs. Uh, so you can't, uh, it won't support that. Um, the same thing with Word, um, it won't support uh, these, um, this functionality. Um, so as and I, and I already met, showed how we can use parameters to filter the data in the drill through report. Uh, continuing on, the next feature that I showed was the drill down. The drill down feature uh, was something that we showed that you know you can control the visibility of one control or one region uh, by uh, by a text box. You know, setting a text box as a toggle to control the visibility of a region of controls. Um, and as this GIF shows, there's a lot more that you could do uh, with um, uh, drill downs. Uh, so this is very useful when you have uh, dashboards, when you have these summary type reports, as I mentioned. Um, and one an important note with regards to drill down and drill throughs, uh, you know, they are very useful, very good to be used with active reports viewers. So if you have the JS viewer, the HTML5 viewer, the WinForms viewer, the web viewer, the, the WPF viewer, whatever kind of viewer, um, it's, uh, you know, they, they, they should be used with these viewers as well, because uh, like I mentioned, you know, when you output these documents to PDF, HTML, and, and these types of things, um, the interactivity is not going to work. Um, so especially with drill down, PDF and HTML, Word, they don't support drill down. Um, continuing on with the bookmarks as we're running short on time, uh, the bookmark functionality um, is, uh, you know, it can be exported to uh, the different formats. So Word, PDF, and uh, HTML all support bookmarks. Um, so that it exports, you know, uh, seamlessly to all of these formats. Um, you can actually use any control with bookmark. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use a text box. You don't have to use any, any anything, but any specific control. But, you know, uh, this bookmark can be any any control. Any control can be marked as a bookmark. Uh, so, for example, in you can you can use a uh, an icon, the return to top icon, for example, as I've shown here. Uh, you can use that uh, in your reports. That when a user clicks on it, they go to the top of the page. Especially with big reports or large reports that have many many pages, and they want to select something, uh, you know, at the beginning of the report. Um, so this is a very good functionality to be used uh, within reports. Having said that, um, the portion that I uh, wanted to cover has been completed. I will hand it back to Evan um, and uh, we'll go ahead and answer any questions you have later on. Awesome. Thanks, your team, uh, for talking to us about the interactive tools for actual reports. All right, guys, mm -hmm. that kind of um, that concludes our um, our webinar. Just to quickly wrap up and answer some questions. Uh, we just went over Active Reports 13.2, so the newest features that came up. Um, with this new service pack, um, we also just released Active Reports JS. Um, like we mentioned, we have a webinar tomorrow at the same time, one in the morning, uh, one in the afternoon. Um, hope you guys can uh, please join us while we demo this brand new product. Um, and then we. And then we also took a look at today um, some data visualization and interactive tools. So the reason why we selected, we handpicked these tools right here is because we've noticed, um, you know, from you guys, the users, that you've um, had um, have had questions or issues with these controls in the past. And we wanted to, you know, create this webinar as a, as a tool and a resource for you guys to, um, you know, better use these controls and get a better better understanding of these controls itself. So um, today we took a look at you know the table, the table of contents, the overflow placeholder, control, the container, and then the team just went over uh, the interactive tools like the drill through, drill down, and bookmarks. Um, 
So now um, we're going to I'm gonna um, we're gonna leave it open um, to see if you guys have any questions. I know we were handling some questions in uh, the queue earlier. Um, if you guys have any questions right now, um, please please feel free to write them in. Um, I know. Um, I know Matina and Troy got some questions earlier from the um, from the webinar that we can kind of go over in the meantime if people don't have questions. So one for example, um, this is related to you, Matina. So um, are these interactive tools that you talked about, are they available in all the report layouts for active reports? That's a good question. Um... So the um, bookmark is available in, in all the, the different report types. So whether it is the uh, page report, RDL report, or the section report, um, drill down and drill throughs are available on page and RDL. Uh, section reports, uh, there's a hyperlink feature in section reports uh, that can be used as a drill through. Um, that's basically the, um, the, um, uh, the limit of it. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Sure. All right, so one question that just came in um, from Paul Harker is, can I embed the JavaScript viewer into my React app? Um, uh, from, from my experience, um, you can in, um, embed the JavaScript viewer in my React app. Um, Mateen, do you have any insight on, on this implementation? Yeah, that's actually a good question as well. We actually have a similar uh, um, sample for um, both uh, the web designer and the JS viewer. Um, so yes, uh, it can be include it can be embedded into um, both a React and a Angular uh, application. Awesome, thanks, Matin. Another thing to add on to that uh, to that question. So in terms of the samples, if you um, if you download Active Reports from our website. Um, these samples come installed um, once you install the software on the machine. So if you um, check out the documents directory on your machine, once it's installed, you'll be able to have access to this JavaScript viewer um, React sample that we've, that we've created. All right, so let's see if we have any other questions in the, in the queue. So we got one more. Um, can I trap clicking on elements in the report and fire off a JavaScript on click event. So I think I'll I think I'll I'll tackle that one. Um, it, we don't have those APIs enabled in the JavaScript viewer currently. Um, that is something that we are working on uh, to be able to do. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Martin. It looks like we had um, some poor quality sound on our end, so we'll have to make sure we can fix that moving forward. Um, another question that uh, came up is, are tomorrow webinars the same as this one? Um, so no, tomorrow's webinars are actually about Active Reports JS, which is a, a newer uh, product that was just released uh, last month, actually. So it's, it's, a, um, it's a part of the Active Reports product family meaning uh, we do, it is a reporting solution, but it's implemented in JavaScript, so it kind of caters to a different audience. Awesome, thanks Troy. Um, so that about uh, wraps up all the questions we have um, today. Um, I, I wanted to say thank you to um, everyone that joined us again today, um, you can, reach out to myself, Troy, or Mateen, whenever you guys feel like it. Here's our email addresses. Um, also, um, we ask, ask us here at Grape City for you guys to stay in touch with us. Um, so, you know, after, after this webinar, uh, we ask that you guys uh, submit a short post-session survey to um, kind of help us see how we did and as well as see, you know, some future potential topics we can um, do other fun for you guys. And then, um, you know, here's some other resources like where you can start a trial, where you can download active reports on our website. Here's where you can contact support, participate in forums, or get your questions answered. Um, it's also on our support portal, 
which can be accessed on our website. And then lastly, if you have any other like sales related questions or you know you want to schedule a demo with either one of us, you can contact us through the website or you can email our uh, sales team and they can get that set up for, for us. But once again, thank you for all joining and hope to see you guys tomorrow for the Act Reports JS webinar.